Well, firstly, uh, thanks for uh, giving up your time on a Saturday night to uh, to hear a, 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 an English bloke with a with a with a very poor Australian accent. Um, I did live over there for 20 years. And I, I, I I I am based in the UK now, so I did uh, I did fly back uh, last week, but uh, I, I, I'm not based there anymore. Um, excuse the, uh, the 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 um, disclosure slide. Excuse me. So why are we here? Well, Salt Lake Potash is advancing um, the development of a new uh, globally significant salt fate of, uh, of potash or SOP province uh, in Western Australia. Um, I mean, in, 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 in summary, to start with, I mean, for a resource project, the concept is, is incredibly simple. Uh, I mean, I've been involved in, in mining for, for over 20 years and finan mining finance, and, 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 and this is one of the, the, the simplest concepts I've seen in terms of a, of a, of a resource project. I mean, essentially, we, we are pumping potassium-rich brines from, from large salt lakes, uh, which are all under our ownership, 100%, uh, into low-cost evaporation ponds. Um, and then we let the sun and wind do, do, its, do its job, basically, which uh, beneficia beneficiates the, the potassium um, salts. We then harvest those salts with, uh, with, with pretty basic mining uh, equipment, and we put them through conventional processing technology um, and convert the salts into a, into a very high-value SOP product. So it's a it's a relatively straightforward process and, and one that we think is has been uh, considerably de-risked uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, so the corporate snapshot, like I mean, um, we are as, as stated earlier, we are a, a, an ASX and AIM listed stock. Um, we have strong institutional ownership in the UK um, and, and and also meaningful insider ownership. The board and, and management we own we own 14% of the stock. Uh, importantly, in the second half of uh, of 2017. We, we, we started to see increasing uh, broker coverage. Um, you know, the analysts on the street are starting to recognise the, uh, the substantial uh, value creation that is, uh, that is likely to occur over, over the next uh, two to three years. And we're, we're, we're currently well funded as well. On the corporate side, um, look, I mean, there, there is a long and established track record of value creation from the management team. Um, Ian Middlemiss, I mean, some of you may, may have heard of Ian. Ian's our chairman. Uh, he is also the chairman of a, of a number of other companies within within the stable. Um, he's he's currently uh, chairman of um, of Berkeley Energy and also uh, Prairie Mining, um, and, and and has been involved in a number of, of uh, significant value creation events over over the over the last decade. Uh, a couple of examples you might be familiar with. One was Papillon, which was a West African gold project. Um, you know, there was a seven times valuation uplift over over the three years of Ian's involvement. And, and more impressively, um, Mantra Resources, which was a uranium project in Tanzania, that was a hundred times uplift in valuation from from IPO uh, through to the takeout by uh, ARMZ uh, five years later. On the technical side, um, we have a very strong representation uh, from the world's leading experts in in, in hydrology, evaporation, and, uh, and and potash processing. Basically, Carlos and, and Marcelo uh, have, have a lot of experience in in Latin America with uh, with SQM. Um, and, and last but by no means least, our, our marketing team is led by Luke, who's sat at the front here with us. Um, Luke has, has 26 years' experience in the, in the fertiliser space, uh, including marketing of the uh, Sirius Minerals polyhalite product. So I'm sure uh, you know, a lot of you guys will be familiar with, uh, with that story in the, in the UK market. So why SOP? Look, I mean, basically, it's a, it's a key source of potassium. Um, which is one of the one of the, the, the three uh, macronutrients that uh, every plant needs. Um, it is the most commonly used uh, non-chloride uh, potash fertilizer in the world, uh, and, and we believe it has a, a very robust uh, demand outlook. Um, it is also importantly priced at a significant premium to to the conventional MOP, um, and is preferred for for chloride sensitive crops. Um, it is also it, it, it's very safe for for high value specialty crops. So. The reason it trades at a premium is that the products that it's used on are tree nuts, vegetables, fruits, teas, uh, tobacco, a turf, etc. Additionally, we also subscribe to the theory of, uh, of, 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 of ongoing agricultural mega trends. And this slide just has uh, some, some very high level detail there. You know, these trends demonstrate clearly that uh, there is an increasing use of, of, of low chloride fertilizer or, or zero chloride fertilizer in our case, as, as population, global population levels are increasing. Um, and, and, and combine that with, with, a, with a reduction in the, in the amount of uh, arable land, yields need to improve, and, 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 and very importantly, 
uh, we're starting to see significant changes in, in, in diets around the world um, with, with increased levels of uh, proteins and sugars, especially in, in uh, emerging markets in Southeast Asia. And this slide, I won't dwell on this slide too much. It's, it's really just sort of demonstrating you know, where we see the, 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 the growth in middle class and also changing diets. So you can have a look at that. Uh, we can make this, well, obviously, this, the, the presentation's available. So why evaporation of brines? Um, again, we, well, there's two very simple reasons. Firstly, because we can. Um, and secondly, uh, as, as the, uh, oh, we'll get this working. So this here is the, uh, this is the cost, the entire cost curve for the SOP global market. And the green bars are basically brine production globally. So as you can see, the, the brine process has a significantly lower cost structure than traditional SOP production, which is from uh, what they call the Mannheim process. Uh, by way of explanation, the Mannheim process involves converting conventional MOP or, or, or potassium uh, chloride in a furnace with sulfuric acid. So the downsides of the Mannheim process are that you know, it requires enormous amounts of energy uh, and, and you've also got the cost of, uh, of, of the MOP and the sulfuric acid. The upside, uh, certainly how we see the upside to the Mannheim process, is that given this cost structure, uh, we believe it provides a very, very strong pricing support uh, and, and we believe it will remain the marginal cost uh, source of production for the, f for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> Why Western Australia? Um, well, look, it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to go, obviously. Um, it's a first world uh, geopolitical environment. Um, you know, so we, we, we're very, very comfortable uh, investing funds in, in Western Australia. Um, but importantly, you know, the brines are there, the evaporation's there. Uh, technically, where we sit in this very high level of, uh, of, of, of inland evaporation rates, uh, to put it into context, Lake Wells, it's about 3.2, 3.3 metres of evaporation per year, which is, which is on a par with the Atacama Desert. Uh, and, and, and about three times the level seen in uh, in Salt Lake, where in Utah, where the other, where the other, where the, where the one of the main salt um, production of uh, SOP comes from. This is this is a, a just a map of Western Australia where our tenements are. For those of you familiar, Kalgoorlie sits about 600 kilometres inland from Perth in, in in Western Australia, and so all of our projects and these are the nine lakes, and we we own all of these lakes. Um, and, and it's a it's a it's a massive footprint. It's almost 5,000 square kilometres, uh, and, and, and importantly for, for what is a, essentially a bulk product, it's all of our lakes are relatively close to, uh, to, to infra key infrastructure. Um, it's very hard to, to, to get a sense of scale on here, so if we just zoom into uh, Lake Wells, so Lake Wells is, is, is the most distal of our lakes, um, but it was the first one we, we, we got the permits to, to, to start work on, so we've, to this point we've done the bulk of our work up at Lake Wells. So these, these photos hopefully give you a sense of you know, just how remote these lakes are um, you know, from an environmental perspective when it comes to permitting. You know, there's nothing in the region that is really going to be uh, going to cause us any, any issues. Um, you know, our intention is to, is to build all the infrastructure on the lake uh, and we're just pulling brines out of the lake, evaporate them on the lake and basically anything that goes back into the lake has already come from the lake. So there's, no environment, there's very, very low environmental risk. Um, we're, we're currently running a, a, an evaporation trial, which is right down here. Um, and again, the, the, this island here is actually this island here. So it gives you a sense of the scale. But uh, given, the, given the audience tonight, I thought I'd put it into perspective even more. So this is the lake, Lake, uh, lake Wells. Um, and basically, it's the same size as the, uh, the entire Peak District. Um, so, you know, we're, 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 not, we're not short of space and we're not short of... Uh, of, of, of like areas to, 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 to build the infrastructure required for the, uh, for the proposed operation. So in terms of the project itself, like, I mean, this, this stock saw it has been under the radar for a lot of people for the last 12 months. And, and, and one of the key reasons for that is that there, there are four key aspects of this project, technical aspects that we wanted to make sure were, were understood and had been confirmed before we, before we really gave, got out and gave this thing a push. And firstly, because we're dealing with brines and evaporation, obviously whether we can extract the brines from the lake is important. The evaporation pond construction, you know, there's, there's two potential methods for that. One is very expensive, one is very cheap. Uh, the, the salt crystallisation, which is the, the, the function of evaporation. And then finally, whether you can convert those salts, those harvested salts into, a, into an SOP product. So I'll touch on these very briefly. Um, I mean, the brine extraction, this is so simple. Basically, what we're doing is we are digging trenches on this salt lake. And by definition, a salt lake in Western Australia, the water table sits just below surface. 
So these trenches are four and a half metres deep, and basically as soon as we put an excavator in there, they fill with water, or they fill with the brines that will then be harvested. So our plan here is, is to have these production trenches, which will then be run via gravity transport trenches to these evaporation ponds, and the water will just be pumped into the evaporation ponds. So a very, very low cost, um, basically, my, form of mining. Now, to get the volumes of brine required for the operation to, for full production, we need about 200 kilometres of trenching, which sounds like an enormous amount. Um, and it is. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of excavation. But in terms of capital, you know, we've, we've now excavated you know, hundreds and hundreds of metres of, 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 these, of these trenches. We can do a kilometre of trench for about forty thousand dollars. So this isn't this isn't a, a high capital part of the project. One of the things that could have been high cost is the pond construction. <clears throat> if you don't have the salt lakes where you can build the you know build the lakes on, um, you would have to line these ponds. And and the difference in cost is is is, is about ninety five percent. So for the for the, the the demonstration plant that we want to build starting this year. We need to have about 400 hectares of evaporation ponds. Now, using the clay within the lakes that we've now demonstrated you, you, we can do, that 400 hectares will cost us about $1.6 million. If we had to line it with, with plastic, it would be $42 million. So again, we've, we, we are very lucky, and, and, and we've now done the work, and it's all been confirmed by, uh, by Emmett Foster-Wheeler, our, 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 our lead consultant, that the, the clays on the lake are absolutely suitable and, and, and appropriate for, for, these, for these construction techniques. So a, a massive saving. The salt crystallisation, look, I mean, to, to those of you that, 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 that think that they look like a series of uh, above ground swimming pools, you would actually be correct, they are. Um, but what we've been doing for 18 months now is, is doing what we call a site evaporation trial. So we've been pumping brines out of those trenches into these into these uh, these swimming pools and just letting the sun do its work. Now, 18 month period is very important because we've now been doing this through all the seasons, all the different seasons throughout the year, um, and so we now have a we now have a very very good grasp and understanding of the of what we call the the, the crystallisation pathways of, of the salts. We don't talk too much about this because we none of our peers or none of our competitors have got this information yet. So we think that we've we've got a significant sort of uh, steal on them in terms of IP um, but and what it does do is it gives us a very good sense as to how we need to blend these salts through the process plant to, uh, to, to, to maintain the production levels. With respect to, to, to the final process um, this, this, this is actually a very very low risk part of it. Um, all of the technology I mean the process basically involves a flotation and then a recrystallization of the uh, of the final product. All of that uh, technology basically is, is off the shelf. Um, you, know, you, 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 can, you can buy those from any, any basically traditional mining supplier. Um, importantly, the proposed process route has, has, and, and final product now had uh, third party validation from, from, from the SRC, uh, with the Saskatchewan Research Council, which is one of the, one of the world's leading, um, leading authorities on, 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 uh, on potash. Now here's where it gets interesting to the economics, which uh, we believe are, are compelling to say the least. We released a scoping study in, 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 in late uh, 2016, which indicated very, very robust economics from a 400,000 tonne per annum um, production centre at, at the Lake Wells mine, or the Lake Wells um, project. Uh, and it, 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 as this chart shows, I mean, our capital intensity, we're looking at about $268 million, so that's about 200, 200 million US to, uh, to, to, to produce 400,000 tonnes of product. Now, the pricing for this product has been very, very flat, or well not flat, but very, very little variation over the last eight to nine years at around $540 a tonne. And we can produce it for 180 Aussie, which is about 140 um, US. So that's about a $400 a tonne operating margin, uh, over, over 400,000 tonnes a year. So you know, we, we have a market cap of about $80 million. Um, basically, that's a, that's half of one year's potential free cash flow from, from the 400,000 uh, tonne production scenario that, that, that we are working towards. So we, we think incredibly robust. And, and $200 million capital, we don't believe, is, is going to be a stretch to fund. Um, I mean, it's not like it's a, it's a, it's a high capital profile. So we're, 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 we're relatively comfortable. So our outlook from here, <clears throat> what are we doing? Well, we, we, we started the, uh, 
the construction of some some pilot ponds, which is basically just a bigger scale set of ponds and some bigger bigger trenches. Um, just a, just a few weeks ago, we were a little bit delayed. We wanted to start that in Q4. We we only got in there a few weeks ago. Um, our our key development point for this year is that we have absolutely every intention of of, of commencing the construction of this demonstration plant uh, early in the second half of this year. Um, now that will do about 40,000 tonnes per annum. Um, why do we want to do a demonstration plant? Well, two reasons really. Firstly, I mean, we believe it will provide, provide a, a significant volume of product that, uh, that, 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 that Luke can sell to, to our customers to gain uh, customer acceptance. Uh, but importantly, it, it, we think it, it de-risks the overall process, um, which will then facilitate potential debt funding of the, of the larger projects. So we, we think we can, by doing this, we will absolutely reduce the amount of dilution um, to, to, to shareholders and investors over time. Um, I'm, I'm very confident we, that we haven't, haven't touched on the, uh, on the marketing side of SOP, uh, primarily due to, to, to the time machines I've just been beeped there. Um, however, if anyone would like to discuss you know, this aspect, then obviously Luke will be around and, and we, can, we can have a chat about it. Um, but to summarise, like, I mean, you know, the executive team at, at Salt Lake, I mean, we, we believe that, that we are progressing one of the world's most significant uh, new provinces of low-cost, sustainable and organic uh, SOP fertilizer sources that will that will supply increasing demand from ongoing uh, agricultural me mega trends, uh, and, it, and obviously it goes without saying that we would be very happy to see investors here tonight join us for what we believe what we believe is going to be a very highly value creative journey from this point. Um, so I'll, at this point, I'll hand over to the floor for questions.